in the document. And of course, it's also highlighted in your tree view as well as the raw XML. OK, let's get back to XPath 2 and show you some more of the um, features that we have. So there, there are a number of items here, but effectively the standard settings work quite well. Um, you may find that you want to um, set your own context node and write expressions based on your own context node. So uh, actually the quickest way to do that is just double clicking on an item in the tree view resets the context node to be that element. Uh, so just to illustrate, now that we've got the context node as um, the first item, if I um, were to select the dimensions of the first item, say, and get the unit, you can see that I'm able to make a relative XPath expression. So now if I change the context elements perhaps to the next one down, and I run that XPath again, um, we now see that it selects the, the next uh, unit attribute down relative to the context node. So that's all that does. Um, if you want to reset back to the root, you just click on root context and you'll see that the root is now highlighted again. Um, what else have we got? I think the best thing to do now is actually to um, start off writing an expression. Uh, obviously, we've got a very simple one there, but I'm going to start off and show you just how this um, IntelliSense can work. So say we're drilling down from the book list, and so we've got books. As you can see, I'm able to, just by typing the first few characters in the IntelliList, list, which is here, I can um, automatically select. Um, and by tabbing, I just um, confirm my selection. So um, if I were to get the uh, dimensions of the item, I can just do that. And then if I only wanted dimensions that had a unit of a specific type, I could say, um, so I know that there's a unit attribute, and then type equals there. So I'm in the predicate now, but the IntelliSense is still um, giving me guidance on uh, what I can do, and so I can, again, I've got in my IntelliList um, uh, appropriate values because I'm doing a uh, equality test. So I say if I only want dimensions whose units are measured in centimetres, I can do that. And there we go. And then we can see that there's, in fact, only one dimension that has got units in centimetres. Um, also, what I can do is um, quickly track back through that expression by um, uh, double-clicking on each part of the expression to see. So I can see all the units as just as confirmation that is the only one that is measured in centimetres. All the rest are in inches. Um, but I can go through and I can see here that there are six. This thing here tells me that I've got six results, and we can see them here as well, of course. Um, and that um, means that when I've actually applied the predicate, so if I just write cursor, that when I've got this selected, if I write cursor, that includes the predicate, and so that brings it back down to uh, just the one dimensions unit with centimeters. Okay. Um, what I'm going to show you next is some more uh, complex XPath expressions. Um, so we're going to open up another XML file. Right, so I'm going to um, clear out this expression first before I open up a new one. So I'll take trace off um, just by clicking trace again, delete that. And let's go back. Um, tell you what, this time I'm going to download um, some XML and I'm going to uh, download the XPath specification itself, the XPath2 specification, just so just click on load here. This is quite a large file, so it takes a bit longer to load. Um, but there are some useful bits that I, I can show you um, with regard to this file. Um, there are some C data types that uh, we need to be aware of. Um, and it's a longer document, as you can see by the uh, time it takes to load. 
Um, you should find that with Sketchpath, any files up to about 200k will load pretty reasonably. Uh, but once you get beyond that, say to about 500k, uh, performance does go down somewhat. Uh, but once you've got something actually loaded, um, you shouldn't have any real problems. Uh, the XPath uh, uh, resolution is actually fairly quick. Um, so, yes, so here we have the XPath 2 uh, specification in XML from the W3C website. And again, I can navigate through this. You can see it's actually a, an XHTML, well, it's it was HTML, but it's been tidied up by HTML tidy as it tells us here. Um, so if I click through the um, element tree, I get to see um, the header elements, but also um, I can navigate down through the body as well and find out some more details. Now, one interesting aspect of this, of course, is that HTML uses mixed content. So I've got text nodes intermixed with uh, attribute um, and element nodes so we can see that here quite well okay um, so I'm going to start off oh, just quickly I'll show you that um, if there's a particular part of the XML source that you want to get into your editor quickly you can just double click on it so if I double click on that um, it shows you um, the XPath expression for that exact element there. Um, so what I would like to do now is probably simplify that expression. In fact, um, let's take off this and complete the predicate so that we've got a full um, XPath expression. Just to go and show you how we trace through um, again using tree view this shows it possibly more effectively than the previous example rather more elements here um, so we've got a div sub element of body um, and so this has got a predicate index that only selects the fifth div element and then within that it's got a number of child div elements and it's got three and extending that to include the predicate and it selects the second one so and so on so I can escape to um, quit the trace of that um, let's do a bit more um, in the way of a complex XPath expression because XPath 2 includes a number of new language features that are extremely powerful but also make XPath easier to read so in fact perhaps I'll start off just by putting in showing that Sketchpath 2 allows comments within it, um, which can be very useful. Okay, and I'm going to um, show how we can build a for expression. So um, it can make an XPath expression a bit more readable. So if I, I, I can set up my own internal variable, so I'm going to say um, for um, paragraphs, how about that? Or oh, let's just abbreviate it for paras in. And let's begin at the top. Uh, body div. And so we'll just say all paragraphs within that um, uh, top level div. And so that's set up a range variable for me. So I can now say for all of those paras, I can return. So the IntelliSense is helping me again by allowing me to know what. So there we've got all the the paras, but I can then um, add a predicate to that um, to say paragraphs where they've got an attribute. Um, sorry, an A element. So that's an anchor element. Um, with an href, or shall we say with an image, sorry, shape, how about the shape, um, and this is where the IntelliSense helps me out. So, and if I select uh, where the shape is a rectangle, 